Hello Year 10s and welcome back to Mathematics. In today's lesson we're continuing with our topic of linear relationships and in particular we're talking about a thing called direct and indirect proportion. So if you have a look here in our learning intention and success criteria we want to be able to understand what different types of proportionalities are and be able to explain what direct and indirect in, uh, or inverse proportion is, calculate rates and solve problems involving direct and indirect proportion. So let's have a look at this lesson's content. First of all, we're going to start off by talking about what proportion is. Now, a definition of a quick definition of proportion. Proportion is a comparison between parts compared to a whole. So what we're actually doing in this in this section is talking about comparisons between two different things. And the way that they these two the two different things that we talk about interact, um, they have different types they it forms different types of proportions. So for example, the first type of proportion we're going to be talking about is called direct proportion. So here's the definition. Two things are directly proportional when they increase or decrease at the same rate. The rate of change of one thing compared to the other is constant. So what this actually means? This means is that when one thing changes, the other thing changes at, a, at the same rate every time. So for example, if one thing increases by one and the other thing increases by two, every time the first thing increases up by one, the other thing increases by two every single time. So an example of this, a good example of this might be if you go to the shops and you're buying packets of chips. And so let's say one packet of chip costs you $3. So if you buy two packets of chips, then it's going to cost, cost you $6. If you buy three packets of chips, it's going to cost you $9, and this pattern will keep going on and on and on and on forever. That's an example of a directly proportional rate. The number of bags of chips that you buy, so the number of bags, is directly proportional to the price of those bags. So every time you buy one more bag, you have to pay three more dollars. That's what it means for two. That's what it means for two things to be directly proportional. And so here, algebraically, they follow the fo they follow the rule as follows. So here is the rule that this follows. This follows the rule y is equal to kx. Now let's talk about what this, the parts of these formulas are. Now, y and x are just your two um, things. So here we call them variables. So here, this is variable number one, and this is variable number two. And so, for example, in that example up above, the variables are the number of bags of um, chips you buy, and the um, other variable would be the cost of those bags of chips, total cost of those bags of chips. So variables are the things that are changing. So as I buy more packs of chips, the cost, total cost is going to be increasing. Now, K is a special term, um, and this is usually a number. This is called the constant of proportionality. And what the constant of proportionality does is it tells me how big is that jump every single time. So here, for the previous example, so e.g., my cost for my bags of chips, so I'm going to say C for my cost of my bag of chips is $3 per each bag of chips times the number of bags of chips I bought. And so here, the constant of proportionality for this example would be 3. It tells me how much, how, what is um, the that rate, that is um, the one our cost is increasing by as we buy each new bag of chips. So that's what direct proportion is. If um, when the two things increase, when one of them increases, the other one increases at the same time, at the same rate, every single time. Now, when one more thing before we actually move on, when we put this on our Cartesian plane, we've actually drawn this particular graph on our Cartesian plane. What it looks like is it looks like a straight line that crosses through the origin. And so here, if I was to graph this, it would look something like this. It goes through the origin and it forms a straight line. And so here I've got my two variables, y and x, and that is what the graph of this particular um, proportion is, the type of proportionality is. Okay, that's the first one. Now the second one, is called indirect proportion. Now, two things are indirectly proportional or inversely proportional when one thing increases and the, uh, and the other thing decreases. So a good example of this is speed and time. So let's say you're trying to drive to the local shops and you, if you drive there at, let's say, 50 kilometers an hour and you reach it at a certain time, and let's say you drive there again, but this time you increase your speed. Instead of driving at 50 kilometers per hour, and you drive at maybe 60 kilometers per hour. Well, if you drive at 60 kilometers per hour to the shops using the same route, what you'd expect is that your time 
would decrease. The amount of time it takes you to get to the shops would decrease. And so here, speed and time are an example of inversely proportional things. As your speed increases, the amount of time it takes you to get to your destination decreases. And so this is an example of what it looks like to do, um, look at inversely proportional things. Um, inversely proportional just means as one thing increases, the other one decreases. So speed and time is a good example of this. Now for this type of proportionality, in our course, we don't actually need to worry about the formula that we're going to be needing to use. We just need to know uh, what this type of thing looks like. And so here, inversely proportional things, what it looks like as a graph, there's a few ways that you could draw this. There's one where you go like this. That's an example of inversely proportional. So what you notice here is if this is y and this is x, so as we move to the right, that means x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you think of your number line, the numbers here get bigger and bigger and bigger. So x gets bigger. As x gets bigger, look at the value of y. We started up the top here, and as we go over time, we get further and further down, and so here, the value of y is decreasing. So here, y is decreasing. And so this is an example of inversely proportional. Now another graph that this might also look like is something that looks like this. So here, once again, at the beginning, y is really has a really big value, but over time, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, even though x is getting bigger and bigger. Okay, so that's what inversely proportional and directly proportional looks like. Now, what we want to be able to do in this topic is actually answer a few questions talking about proportion and also rates. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this section. The first thing we're going to be talking about is unit conversion graphs. So with these particular graphs, all we need to do is just read off the graph. And I'm going to show you how you do that for these questions. So let's have a look at example one. A length measured in centimeters is directly proportional to the length in inches. So what this means, a length measured in centimeters is directly proportional in length in inches. So as your measurement in centimeters increases, so does your measurement in inches, but it might not happen at the same time. So it's not saying that one, when you increase something by one centimeter, you're going to increase by one inch. It just means that when you if you measure something or, and it starts to grow, then your measurement in centimeters, as you measure in centimeters, is also is going to grow. And that means your measurement in inches is also going to grow. It happens at a particular rate, and we don't know what that rate is, but we can actually find it using the graph. So use the graph below to make the following unit conversion. So the first one, 15 inches to centimeters. Now, the way that we read this graph, if you have a look, on the y-axis, we've got centimeters, and on our x-axis, we've got inches. And so all we need to do is find the measurement that we have. So here we've got 15 inches. So I'm going to go to my x-axis, inches, and have a look where 15 is, right here. So once I've done that, I'm going to draw a dotted line that goes all the way up to my line graph there, and I'm going to draw a dotted line to the y-axis, and that will tell me what the value in centimeters is. So if you have a look here, that's roughly 38 centimeters, where that measurement is. So that's how we read off a graph, fairly simple. Let's have a look at the next one. 68 centimeters to inches. So here's 68 centimeters, centimeters on my y-axis. So I'm going to go to where 68 is, which is hap nicely drawn for me already. I'm going to draw a dotted line to my graph and then read down. And if you have a look, that's at roughly 27 inches. And so that's how we can actually read off information from a graph like this. We find which measurement we have or which unit we have, and we just go to where the line is on our graph and then we read down. This is similar to stuff we did when we looked at um, data and statistics uh, at the end of last term. So this is just reading off a graph in short. It's a, it should be fairly simple and straightforward. Okay, that's the first part of today's lesson. The next part is we want to actually convert between rates. Now, early in this topic, we actually talked about rates. Now, a rate is a comparison between two different units. So, for example, when you measure speed, you measure in stuff in, in units such as meters per second. And here is an example of a rate because you're comparing meters and seconds. Meters is a measurement of distance and seconds is a measurement of time. And so this is an example of a rate. It's comparing two different units. And what we did in that in that section was we actually divided your units. What we want to be able to do in this section is actually convert between different units, uh, different uh, units for rates. So here, me uh, meters per second, that's a measure of your speed. But there's other ways that you can measure speed. There's other units that you could use. A very common one that you might remember is, if, you do, if you're in a car, kilometers per hour. And so here, this is also a measurement of speed because kilometers is, um, kilometers is a measure of distance. 
and hours is a measurement of time. So here, this is another example of a, a unit of measurement for speed. And so what we want to be able to do is actually convert between different rates um, that involve similar measurements that measure the same thing. So what we want to be able to do when we're converting rates, the way that we do this, I've got three steps here. Firstly, identify the units in your starting rate and your target rate. So here for this one, for example, my units in my starting rate are meters and seconds. And in my target, I've got kilometers and hours. Then what we want to do is we want to change each unit in your starting rate to match the units in the target rate. So we want to change the units in your starting rate. So here I would change my meters into kilometers and seconds into hours. So we would use conversion stuff, which is stuff that we actually looked at at the beginning of this year when we looked at the topic of measurement. Okay. Then the final step is we do division. So we divide the numbers in the second variable in the per unit. Now here in the final step, what we want to do is figure out whatever number is inside our second unit. So here, this is our second unit's worth time. And all we need to do is just divide by that number. So let's have a go with a couple of examples of this. Convert the following rates to the units in the given brackets. So here, let's have a look at this first one. I've got $12 per hour. So that might be someone's hourly rate at a part-time job. And what we want to do is convert that to cents per minute. So we want to find out how many cents they earn every single minute. That's also another unit of how much they get paid. But here, we're actually using a different unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify the units in our... Um, in our starting rate and our target rate. So notice here, in my starting rate, I've got $12 per hour. Now $12 per hour, that is in dollars and hours. And in my target rate, I've got it in cents and minutes. So what I'm gonna do now, I've identified my units, and what I'm gonna do is change each of my starting rates to match the, oh, starting each of the units in my starting rate to match the units in my target rate. So what I want to do, I'm going to, I'm just going to write my um, rate down here. So I've got $12 per hour. I'm going to write this as cents per minute. So let's start off with the left hand side, $12. Now, $1 is just 100 cents. So if I want to get this $12 in cents, what I need to do is just times by 100. So 12, um, $12 is just 12 lots of 100. So that's 1,200 cents. $12 is just equivalent to 1,200 cents. Then in my second unit, so that was dealing with my dollars. I've converted it into cents. Then if you notice, I've got this hours here and I want this in minutes. Now, one hour is just 60 minutes. And so that's all I need to do for the first step. I've just converted both of the units. Okay, cool. Now that I've done that, all I need to do as a final step is then divide my first number here by the unit in by the number in my second unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as that's 12, 12, 1,200 divided by 60 cents per minute, and that's all I'm going to do. Okay, so 12,000 divide 1,200 divided by 60 will actually give me 20 cents per minute. And so what this tells me is if you earn $12 per hour, that means that every minute you are working, you are earning 20 cents. So that's how we convert our rates. First of all, we identify the units in our rate. Then we convert the units from my first starting rate to my target rate. And then I just do a division of the second, uh, the unit, the, the number in my second unit. Okay, let's have a go at another example. Here I've got 7.2 liters per hour. So let's say someone is filling up a bottle or something and they fill it up at 7.2 liters per hour. What we want to do is we want to figure out what that is in uh, milliliters per second. So here, what are our units? So in my first one, I have got liters and hours. And in my second one, I've got milliliters and seconds. So I want to convert my liters to milliliters, my hours to seconds. So let's do that. So I'm going to, going to write out my starting rate, 7.2 liters per hour. And then we just convert. Now, liters to milliliters. In one liter of, a, of um, volume, you've got 1,000 milliliters. So one liter is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters. So here, when I want to convert from liters to milliliters, I just multiply. So here, this is going from uh, liters to milliliters. I'm just going to times the two by, um, I'm going to times that 7.2 by 1,000. So here, I'm going to get 7,200 milliliters. Okay. 
per. I want to convert hours to second. Now this is where it gets a little bit trickier. Now one hour, if we want to break it down one hour, we first need to break it down into minutes. And so one hour is 60 minutes. Now, one, uh, 60 minutes, well, we can then break that down in seconds. In a minute, you've got 60 seconds. So here, what that means is I need to divide that further, times that by another 60 to get seconds. And so here, this becomes 36,000 seconds. And so here, for my um, measurement here, I'm going to write 36,000 seconds, or S. So what I've done here is I've converted my 7.2 liters to 7,200 milliliters. I've converted my hour into 3,600 seconds. These two have the same value. All, both of these units still have the same values, but now we've just converted it to a smaller unit. Okay, now that we've done that, what I want to do is then I'm just going to divide my first unit by, first number by the second number. So here I'm going to go 7,200 divided by 3,600 milliliters per second, and that's it. Okay, I want to simplify this just a little bit. So this becomes two milliliters per second. So what this tells me is if I'm filling up something at 7.2 liters per hour, that's just equivalent to two milliliters per second. So that's how we go about these questions. For these questions here, when we are converting between rates, what we want to do is we want to rewrite our rate in terms of the units in our second rate. So I identify the units I have in my first rate, then I convert it to the units in the second rate. Then once I've done that, I'm just going to simply uh, divide by the unit in the second rate, second unit. So here I divided by 60 in the first one and divide by 3,600 in the second one in ex second example. Okay, so we've converted between units between rates. What we're now going to do is we're going to actually look at just identifying the shape of the graph. This particular lesson is a little bit longer, so if you need to take more time to go through it, that's okay. Okay, actually. Before I do that, I'm going to actually look at two more examples. I've got two more examples here. Let's quickly have a look at these. Okay, next two. Next one, we've got 90 kilometers per hour, and we want to convert that into meters per second. Okay, just like we did before, I'm just going to write this out. So once you get the hang of this, we're just going to do the steps underneath. So 90 kilometers per hour. I want to convert that into meters per second. So I want to convert my kilometers into meters and my hours into seconds. So kilometers to meters. Well, one kilometer is a thousand meters. So I need to times this 90 by a thousand. So that's what I'm going to do. 90,000 meters. So I've converted my kilometers now to meters per one hour into seconds. Just like we did before when we converted hours into seconds, I just do 60, 60 times 60, which is 3,600 seconds. Okay. And now that I've done that, I'm just going to divide my, so here I've converted my hours into one hour into seconds. Now that I've done that, I'm going to divide my 9,600 by 9,000 by this 3,600. So I'm going to go 90,000 divided by 3,600 meters per second. Chuck that in the calculator. 90,000 divided by 3600. That gives me 25. So that tells me that someone is traveling at 25 meters per second. If you're traveling at 90 kilometers per hour, that's the same as traveling at 25 meters per second. Okay, last one. Now this one's a little bit trickier because if you notice, we're going from smaller units into bigger units. So here I've got 300 grams per month. I'm going to shorthand months to MTH. And here we're converting grams to kilograms and month into years. Now all the previous ones, we've gone from big units into smaller units. So dollars were bigger than cents, hours bigger than minutes, liters were bigger than milliliters, hours was bigger than seconds, kilometers were bigger than meters, hours bigger than seconds. So here we're actually going from small to big. We still can do the same steps, but we actually need to do a few more things in between. Now, let's first start off with my grams to kilograms. Now, if I'm going from grams to kilograms, instead of timesing, I'm actually going to divide. So I'm going to divide this 300 by 1,000 because there's 1,000 grams in one kilogram. So that will give me 0 0.3 kilograms per, okay? Now, months into years, unfortunately, I can't. Um, I actually don't want to do that um, particular, uh, because I'm going from small to big, I can't actually do that nicely. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go, okay, per one month. That's what that month means. So that's 0 0.3 kilograms per one month. Now here, I don't want to have one month. I want to have 12 months because I want one year. 
So what I need to do is I'm going to change this into 12 months. Now, if I change the my second number by uh, multiplying it, uh, multiplying it, I also need to do that to my first unit. So here I've ch multiplied my second unit by 12 to get 12 months. And so I need to do that to the same to my first unit. So this becomes 3.6 kilograms. So if I, in one month, get 0 0.3 kilograms, that means in 12 months, I get 3.6 kilograms. And now here, 12 months, that's one year. And so I'm done here by saying 3.6 kilograms per year. So this one was a little bit trickier because we actually needed to convert upwards. If we convert upwards, the steps are a little bit different. So please have a look at this bit, this question again, if you're not sure how to do this one. Okay, so that's converting between rates. Now what we want to be able to do is identify graphs for different types of proportions. So here, this is an example of graphs of direct and indirect proportion. So what we want to do is determine whether the graphs show X and Y in direct proportion or inverse to proportion and state the reason why. So let's have a look at these examples of these graphs. Now, what I said er earlier was that the graph for direct proportion needs to look like this. It needs to look like this. It starts at zero, zero, and it goes up like this. It's growing at a constant rate. So you have a look at this first one. Is this one in direct proportion or inverse proportion? Well, it's actually neither. This one is neither because it doesn't pass through zero, zero. So it does not pass the origin. In order for us to have in uh, what's it called direct proportion, we need to pass through the zero zero. Okay, have a look at the second one, B. Now B, it starts at zero zero, which is great, but have a look at the graph. It's curved, and even though it's increasing, it's curved. So this one is going to be neither as well. It's not decreasing. So notice here, it's not going downwards in this direction. It's actually still increasing, but it's not increasing at the same rate. So here, this is not increasing at constant rate. If it's increasing at constant rate, what that would look like is it would look like a straight line. So for example, the first one is a great example of increasing at constant rate. It's got a straight line. But the problem with this one is it doesn't pass through origin. The second one is passes through the origin, but doesn't increase at a constant rate. It doesn't have that straight line. And so this one is not neither direct proportion or inverse proportion. Let's have a look at C. Now C, if you have a look at the shape, well, that is direct proportion. Yes. Um, so this is direct proportion. And the two criteria were, one, it passes through the origin. So here, if you have a look, it passes through the origin here. And it, it increases at constant rate. So if you have a look at the graph, it's a straight line. So that's what it means for us to have a direct proportion graph. It's increasing at the same rate over time. Okay, final one, this one. Now this one is an example of indirect or inverse proportion. The reason why this is the case is because if you have a look at the shape of the graph, we start at a high value of Y and then we go down as X gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So what this tells me is as X increases, so as we move along the X axis over here, the Y value, it goes downwards, Y decreases. So that's what I'm going to write here. As X increases, Y decreases. And that's the condition for us to have inverse proportion. So here, these are the four graphs we, are, we identified. So if you're looking for a direct proportion graph, it needs to firstly pass through the origin and also be in a straight line. If you're looking for indirect proportion, it means that one thing is increasing, the other thing is decreasing. It's just kind of like this shape. So these are the shapes we need to be aware of. Okay, the final part of this topic, this section is probably the most important part in terms of helping us deal with, con uh, what's it called, direct proportion. Now, if you remember from the beginning of this lesson, I wrote down that all directly proportional variables follow the following equation. Y is equal to K x and we said that k and y and k, y and x are our two variables and k is the constant of proportionality so when we're answering these questions we want to be using this particular formula for our different scenarios i'm going to show you how so when we are, here are the steps to deal when we are dealing with problems with direct proportion so the first step identify your variables so in your question there are going to be two things that are changing whether it be cost and time cost and number of um, sales 
those are your variables. And what we want to do is we want to give them appropriate pronumerals. So for example, if something was the cost of something, you might use the letter C. If something was like the number of hours or number of particular things, you might use a letter N. You want to pick an appropriate letter to represent your variable. Then from there, we're going to write the direct proportion equation using your variables. So we replace Y and X with your variables. So here you might write C is equal to KN based on those two examples there. Then what we do is we find the value of K and what we do is we substitute values from the question. They'll give you information to sub to put into, uh, they'll give you information from the question to put into the into your equation. And what you want to do is find the value of K by substituting and solving for K. Then what you want to do is just rewrite the equation with your value of K. So we want to rewrite the new number. So let's say K was equal to two. That would mean I want to just write K is equal to C is equal to two N for this example. And then to answer questions involving finding a value, what you want to do is substitute values into your equation. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's, in this final part of this lesson. Okay, so example four, forming direct proportion equation when given the value of K. So here in this example, let's just read what they give us. For a fixed price per liter, the cost C of buying fuel is directly proportional to the number of liters. Okay, so what this means, if you're buying fuel, the cost of fuel, they're saying, is C. That is directly proportional. So that will increase at the same at the constant rate um, with the number of liters that you purchase. So as you buy more liters of fuel, um, the cost of buying that fuel is going to increase as well. Okay, so write the direct proportion equation given that K is equal to $1.45 per liter. Now, if you see that... Um, see this particular equation, what this tells you is that you need to write the first unit on the left hand side and replace Y with this first unit and X with the second unit. So here, dollars, that is the unit for my cost and L is for my liters or N in this scenario because that's for my number of liters. So what I'm going to write here is I'm going to write C is equal to KN. So what I've done here is I've just rewritten y is equal to kx. I've just replaced y with c and x with n. Okay, I've written that down. And I'm just going to replace k with 1.45. And so final step here is c is equal to 1.45n. There we go. That's how we answer this first one. Okay, part B. Use the equation from part A to calculate the cost of purchasing 6.3 litres of fuel. So if you have a look here, we're buying 6.3 liters of fuel. If you have a look at my equation, which letter are we going to substitute this into? Is 6.3 liters of fuel a cost? Well, no, it's not the num It's not a cost. It's actually a number of liters. So this is, I'm going to su substitute N is equal to 63. So 63 tells me I'm going to substitute N is equal to 63. So I'm going to go sub N is equal to 63. So I'm going to write my equation above. C is equal to 1.45N. I'm just going to replace n with 63, so that becomes 1.45 times 63, 1.45 times 63, and that tells me that it costs $91.35 for that 63 liters of fuel. So that's how we answer these questions with direct proportion. We want to use that equation, y is equal to kx, and replace it with the letters in our equation. We want to find the value of k, so in this example we got the value of k, and if we're answering any further questions, we just substitute the values they give me. Okay, let's have a go at another example where K isn't given to me and I actually need to go find it. So let's have a look at this question. The amount of wages Chloe earns is in direct proportion to the number of hours she works. So here they tell us that the amount of wages that Chloe earns is in direct proportion to the number of hours she works. Let's, so let, that's what we're going to deal with here. Let's introduce some letters here. So a wages... For Chloe's wages, let's introduce a letter. Let's call it W for wages. And here it's directly proportional to the number of hours she worked. Now from the last last, last bit, we say we, we're going to use N for number of hours. N for number of hours. Okay, let's have a, let's have a look at the first part. Find the constant of proportionality, K, given that Chloe earns $166.50 in 18 hours. Okay. Let's have a go at applying this the formula that we had above. Now, if you have a look, we're just going to rewrite it in this direct proportion equation. So I'm going to go, okay, W 
is equal to k times n. So once I've done that, I'm going to look at my question. Well, I want to find the value of k. They haven't given it to me. I will need to actually find it. But what information have they given me? Well, they've given me that Chloe earns $166.50 in 18 hours. So I'm going to need to substitute these two values into my equation. Now, what, which ones are they going to be? Well, $166.50. Is that a wage that she earns or is that the number of hours that she works for? Well, if you think about it, that's her wage. That's how much money she earns. So I'm going to replace W with 166.50. And that leaves me with 18 being the number of hours she works. So I'm going to replace those two values in my equation. So I'm going to write here 166.50 is equal to K times 18. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to solve for K. I want to have K by itself. And so here, if you have a look on the right hand side, I've got K times 18. If I want to get rid of that times 18, I need to divide by 18. So therefore, k is equal to 166.50 divided by 18. That's just 166.50 divided by 18. That gives me 9.25. So that's 9.25 liter uh, dollars per hour. So what that tells me is that Chloe actually earns 9.25 dollars per hour. So let me just rewrite her equation for wage. So her wage is just 9.25 dollars times the number of hours she works. Okay, that's the first part in us finding the constant of proportionality. Okay, next part. Calculate the wages earned for eight dollars, eight hours and 45 minutes of work. So here, I'm going to need to use my equation that I had from above. W is equal to 9.25 times N. Now if you have a look, this is eight hours and 45 minutes of work. Is that a wage or is that a number of hours? That's a number of hours. So here I'm going to actually replace nine uh, n with eight hours and forty five minutes. Now, unfortunately, we can't just put eight hours and forty five minutes into my calculator like that. I can't just put eight point four five because that's not quite correct. What I want to actually do is convert this into a measurement in hours. In particular, I want to deal with this forty five minutes. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. The easiest way, if you're not sure and it always works, is putting it into your calculator. The way I can put time into my calculator is I go, okay, eight, and use this button degrees, um, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I'm going to press this button and put this little black box in the top right corner, 45, and put another box. So that means that if you press, and I press equal, that means that she's worked for eight hours and 45 minutes. That's what this number here shows. Now, if I press SD a few times, that tells me that's 8.75 hours. So here, I'm going to have 8.75 hours. And now that I've got that value, I can substitute it into my wage equation. So here, this becomes 9.25 times 8.75. So here, let me put that into my calculator. 9.25 times 8.75. So that means that in uh, 8 hours and 45 minutes of work, she earns $80.93.75. 90, or if we ran it to two decimal places, because that's what we deal with money, 80.94. And that's how we calculate her wage from this equation. We want to find out how many hours she worked, and then we can just sub that in. Let's have a look at the last one. Calculate the number of hours Chloe needs to work in order to earn $259. Now, $259, is that a wage or is that um, a number of hours? Well, this is actually her wage because this is what how much she, we want her to get paid. So I'm going to replace W with 259. So here I'm going to write down that equation we started off with. I'm just going to replace W with 259. So I'm going to write 259 is equal to 9.25 times N. And like we did in that previous example, if I want to get N by itself, I just want to divide 259 by 9.25. So I'm going to write N is equal to 259 over 9.25. So I'm going to go 259 divided by 9.25. That gives me 28 hours. So it means that it takes her 28 hours to earn that amount. So that's it for today's lesson. I'm sorry if I rushed over things. This is quite a long video, so I didn't want to spend too much time on it. But if you're not sure about a particular question or have any questions about anything, um, look back on the section in this video. Um, and if you're not, uh, and if you need a hand, I'm more than happy to answer, uh, uh, help you out if you send me an email or comment in Google Classroom. But until next lesson, year 10, I hope you're staying safe wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.